Let's talk about the uh, the paradox of anti-racism. <sighs> yes. these, woke, yeah. these, these woke people say that they are anti-racist. But as we know, according to Ibram X. Kendi, uh, anti-racism means actively participating in discrimination. GeekWire writes, Trulia to drop neighborhood crime data from home listings after Redfin speaks out against practice. You're going to love this one. Oh they, they say, Given the long history of redlining and racist housing covenants in the United States, there's too great a risk of this inaccuracy reinforcing racial bias, Christian Taubman, Redfin's chief growth officer, wrote in December 13th post. We believe that Redfin and all real estate sites should not show neighborhood crime data. There is something profoundly racist wow. about taking down crime data oh. and saying it's because it's racist. Isn't it oh, paradoxical? That's disgusting. Because the implication, of course, is that black people, right, don't mm. also want to know where crime <laughs> exactly. is so they could avoid it, right? It's so disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I guess Amazing. they think it's it's like they have this, everyone should experience all of the crime. That way, no one, it's not one equality. group that does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, equality, everyone suffers. Is it's that so is that? disgusting. The erasure of the victims of crime. Mm hmm. Like the it's because it embarrasses white liberals that the perpetrators of these violent crimes are people of color that embarrasses them. Right. Because it doesn't fit with the anti-racism where black people are the oppressed and white people are the oppressors. They are willing to erase the victims of these crimes, children being gunned down in their neighborhoods every day. And no one will talk about it. The issue with with uh, uh, crime in big in big cities and in this country is always poverty. Mm -hmm. You take a look at impoverished white neighborhoods, you'll see a high level of crime. You take a look at black neighborhoods, impoverished high levels of crime. And what they do is they put a racial component on it, which makes everyone immediately assume the crime is race based. It's a class issue. That's my big problem I take with with wokeness. It's basically uh, it, it's a scapegoat for the wealthy elites. As you mentioned, it's a class issue, but they disguise it. And it makes these liberals feel good without having to actually change anything. They're not going to move from their white enclaves. They're just going to pretend like they're doing something by removing the crime stats from, from their websites. Meanwhile, they all know where they're living. They all know where they come from. They all know what they want to do and how they want to do it. Anti-racism is very racist. Yes. And it's Chloe Valdere, I believe, said very plaintively called it uh, counter-dependence. So you can have a codependent relationship with racism where you're like blatantly racist and scream at people like you're worse than me. But having a counterdependence on racism is also racist. Trying to trying to use racism to combat racism because you hate racism yeah. and you'll use you'll go to any lengths to stop racism, including be racist. But a, a, makes lot, no a, sense. a lot of this and it is racist. For what reason does Redfin or Trulia have to remove crime data? This is just a virtue signal. And this data isn't going away just because they're not putting this filter on top of the map anymore. They have the data. Their rich allies have the data. The people who want it will get it. The normal people will not have it. And this that's disgusting. This, this I think that's the, the hypocrisy you're talking about. I'll tell you exactly why I can't stand uh, the Democratic Party and overwhelmingly the establishment left. They are willing to ignore reality for the sake of tribe. Now, certainly the Trump supporters have that element too, but they're not in power. They don't control cultural institutions. And I, I just look at um, COVID data. I take a look at uh, the vaccine mandates, the mask mandates. I take a look at how they virtue signal this way. I take a look at how they tell people, we want to Black Lives Matter said they want to disrupt the nuclear family. Even though we know the nuclear family is a huge component, re it's, it's related to success and a better living. When it comes to all of these policies, Rich people are exempt. They're always exempt. Rich person wants crime data. They simply go to a service and they pay the money and they get it. Right. And if, you, if you're making millions of dollars, what do you care about spending a thousand bucks on crime data? But they'll remove it for you, mm -hmm. the average American. When it comes to vaccine mandates and mask mandates, rich people don't got to worry about it. When it comes to air travel, oh no, everybody's got to wear their mask. They want to fly in planes. Joe Biden says, maybe we'll do a vaccine mandate for air travel. The rich person says, I'll just take private. Why do I care? It's always something negative for the poor and the working class. I just, you know, I, I take a look at going back to the Trump years. You had Americans suffering. These small towns were being gutted and destroyed by neoliberal policy, sending factories overseas. And then when these people said, we need help, and many of them wanted Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton wins. They say, OK, we'll take Trump. The response from the elites is, you're all racists 
and you're perpetuating white supremacy. And, and this is where we are today, the, the, the aftermath of all of this fake virtue signaling garbage. Yeah, this article reminds me, it, it's kind of similar to what happened on The View in 2015 when we had uh, Kelly Osborne said, we oh, can't yeah. kick the Latinos up because who's going to clean our toilets? <laughs> So this she was, really said she that? said that on air, on, yeah. air, on national television. Wild. And when you look at a lot oh of these God. kind of wokest, when you look at a lot of these kind of anti-racist <gasps> apologists, many times these individuals are the, the biggest racist themselves because they believe that they're better than other people and that they need to help them because they're so much better in, in all circumstances than, than other people because of their skin color. That, that viewpoint is absolutely absurd, and it's, it's this, white knighting to the absurd levels. This explains mm -hmm. the white progressive so well. Authoritarian, elitist, and racist all at once, but guilty about it. <laughs> I, I, I think, you know, I, I was talking to someone, I worked in LA for a little bit, I lived there for a little bit, and people were telling me that celebrities are really scared. They're really superstitious, so they donate a lot of money to various causes because they're worried about karma. You know, they do this movie, they make millions of dollars, and they feel bad that they're living this way, so they give money away. This is kind of the same thing. They're, I, think, I think a better way to explain it is Warren Buffett, when he said, I, I can't remember exactly what happened with this, but he was like, we should do a pledge to give away half our money or something. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that, Luke? Something uh, like that. I remember that, yeah. And it, I, I don't think it had anything to do with him actually caring. I think it had to do with him hedging his bet that there was going to be a class war yeah. and people were not going to tolerate his wealth. So he's like, I'm giving stuff away. So when I see this stuff, these are white supremacists with guilty consciences. Mm. Yep. These, these liberals, these progressives, they're deeply racist individuals. They push deeply racist policies. They've actively tried to get civil rights legislation repealed in California. What, which proposition was that where they tried to repeal from their California constitution the civil rights provision? No joke. They tried to remove yeah. that because they said, well, once we get rid of it, then we can help the poor minorities by giving them preferential treatment. And I was talking to a friend of mine who's an L.A. celebrity, woke, whatever. And she was advocating for this, saying we need this proposition. It was, they called it the affirmative action proposition. That by removing the non-discrimination non clause from our constitution, we will be able to help poor minorities go to school and get better jobs and better government contracts. And so I asked my friend, what percentage of California is white? What is it, like 70%? Can you pull that up real quick? I think it's upwards of 70%. And I said, do you think, and, and what about like central California and a lot of these smaller towns? What percentage of, what percentage of white do you think they are? And she's like, oh, I probably like 99%. I was like, yeah. Do you, do you think these people are all racist? Do you think white people are racist? 71%. 71%. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I think, you know, white people are deeply racist. And I said, okay, so when you take away the constitutional provision that bars racial discrimination and give a 71% white majority the ability to discriminate, do you think they're going to all of a sudden give up that power or entrench it? That's what, that, that's what they, I, I think, honestly. I'm not so worried about the small town white you know, uh, majority putting up you know, uh, whites only or anything like that. I am worried about these progressive Hollywood types who will be like, oh, well, you know, why can't we do that? They've already done it in Seattle with their, you know, they had the, um, what, what did they say? Diversity, uh, people of color room and non-POC room. Yeah. Have you seen these? Yeah. When they, when they yeah. start segregating. So forgive me if I don't trust these activists when they claim they're doing it for altruistic reasons. Dude, yeah, it's like Bill Gates really quickly. I just yeah. want to make a reference because there's an example I could make here. When he said he was going to give off all of his wealth to charity, he literally doubled his wealth in a few years. <laughs> So th that that's the type of individual. Sorry, go ahead, Ian. Well, I just I, needed to say I that. I wonder how many times you got to see a movie where the guy's like, quick, give me the ultimate power item. Quick, quick. And then you yeah. give it to him and he's like, yeah, ah, thank ah. you. And he turns and uses it on you. And you're like, dude, <laughs> like you don't get, uh, give that kind of authority to someone. I, 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 I don't really believe that if California got rid of that provision in their constitution, all of a sudden all the white people would be like, now's our chance. <laughs> but that would <laughs> but, ultimately but. eventually happen in, a, in, a, no, 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 no. in but, an entropic but, system. What I mean is for my... My friend to claim that she's you know she's woke and she believes white people are all racist right to then want to give the white majority the power to discriminate against people based on race makes no sense and they won't back away from it her response to me was yeah well you know it's the right thing to do and i'm just like do you actually care about the logic of helping poor people or is it just i'm gonna say whatever my tribe tells me to say so i'm popular 
Okay, but we have two parties in this country. And one of my big gripes with Republicans is like, okay, it's true. You're not all white supremacists. But where's your counter offer to fix the remaining problems that we have with racism? Like there's nothing there. There's nothing doing. You would think they would be showing up in the black community and saying, hey, I'm going to give you school choice. Get your kid into a good school. And I'm going to put the criminals away so your kid doesn't get shot on the way to that good school. And they don't show up. Well, so the Republican establishment doesn't, but the populist Republicans are starting to do that. We, They're we, starting to. It's true. Well, so that's, but that's what like we need. very, very slowly. And it's sort we of need, like... We need everybody to primary every establishment yes. politician, be it Democrat or Republican. Yeah. And then we can get some Democrats who say the exact same thing as Republicans say the same thing. and Because populism is, is the answer regardless of your economic position. I don't care if you're a laissez-faire populist or a communist populist. If we find key issues we're going to work together on, and then we can argue about the rest of it, Excellent. Right. Instead, what we have is the Democratic establishment is obsessed with Trump. The Republican establishment just obstructs. And then we get we get nowhere as as, you know, Americans who are trying to actually solve our problems yeah. to live better lives. This is why I think one of the reasons Trump wins. At the very least, Trump was like, I'm going to bring your factories back. I'm going to bring your jobs back. I'm going to deal with the opioid crisis. I'm going to deal with our border crisis. We're going to end these foreign wars. Far from perfect in a lot of these things. But hey, he didn't start any new wars. He trigger you know he set the timeline for getting us out of out of Afghanistan he tried getting us out of Syria he did bring many of our factories back joe biden comes in everything falls apart once again i feel like now they're just I, the establishment politicians namely the democrats here, here's here's what i see happening let me slow down it was always the same with the democrats and the republicans the uniparty bernie and trump staged an insurgency from the left and the right bernie is weak he gave in he caved and now he toes the line he has been absorbed into the machine Donald Trump is a crazy person who kicked the door and screaming and took over. And now a large portion of the Republican Party is controlled by Trump and his supporters. There still remains establishment Democrats in control, but they're slowly being weeded out. Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, these guys, in my opinion, are awful. Even Ted Cruz has proven himself to be weak and feckless. Then you do have a lot of populist Republicans who are a little too aggressive, but it's better than the establishment, in my opinion. The Democrats have doubled down and redoubled their efforts. The neocons who are booted out of the party jump sides to the Democratic establishment mm-hmm. with like the Lincoln Project yeah. mm-hmm. and now start towing all of that line. So that's that's it. They're, the Uniparty is in the Democrats. They are mm-hmm. extracting as much as they can from this country as the ship is sinking. The, Mitch McConnell, his whole attitude is, well, I'm going to stand here and do nothing and be a speed bump. While the Democrats are like, the only thing you should care about is Donald Trump. And Nancy Pelosi goes, buy more stocks as I change the laws. They don't, I, I don't believe any one of these politicians, save a small handful, actually care about making this country better. I think for the most part, they all see it as what can I do to ensure my family's wealth and success because the country is collapsing. That's what I see across the board. So my hope now is that come the primaries, people go to the Republican Party and they vote out every single one of these establishment Republicans, all of the, and then you, you get some working class individuals. Uh, American populists, and the same thing happens to the Democratic Party. I hope the Democrats get some, you know, I, 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 it doesn't really fly on the left, but moderate, working class, populist, center left individuals to get rid of the Democratic establishment, corporatist, crony garbage, and the woke trash. And then the Republicans need to do the same thing to the neocon war hawks and corporatists as well. And Don't then repeal the Federal yet. Reserve Act of 1913. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> we're headed towards zero. Yeah. We got to get rid of that stupid corporation, man. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like decentralization is our best bet. Less centralized power at the, at the federal level, you know, is, a, is, our, is our best opportunity. Because right now what's happening is both sides are trying to fight for supreme power. But this is actually the first time in history that it's been, that it's never been better to create a decentralized government. Mm. What gives you hope, Tim? Like what, what is your positive vision? Like what? Yeah. I mean, uh, well, gun rights. Wow. Uh-huh. That's fantastic. Uh, gun rights have been winning across the board. And that it says more than just guns. It says that regular people are, are, are focused on their individual responsibilities. Autonomy. Yeah, yeah. autonomy. There is still an, a, a, a semblance of also a lot of people expect the country to fall apart. But I actually I'm I'm uh, it's I, I wouldn't say any of this is pessimistic. Mm-hmm, I think it's fairly mm-hmm, optimistic. Mm-hmm. I think the, the uh, uh, populism is winning. The the. Uh, Day after day, we can see that 
Anybody who toes the establishment line is, is mocked ruthlessly and insulted and derided, and they're not going to survive politically. Adam Kinzinger is the best example. He, he, he comes out and he tweets an insult at Jack Posobiec, and I'm just like, bro, you, you're not going to win a re-election if you're against Jack Posobiec. Mm-hmm. Jack is a very prominent conservative personality. He's a millions, million plus followers or whatever. He does a big podcast. So you don't got to, the, I don't, I don't, the left doesn't like the guy, but on the right, they love him. If you're a Republican and you're like, I oppose what these people stand for, you may as well leave. So these establishment guys are going to lose. I think the same thing's going to happen on the Democratic side. 26 Democrats have announced their retirement because they know they're done. Kinzinger announced his retirement. He knows he's done. The establishment is broken. It's falling apart. CNN's ratings are in the trash. Our ratings are through the roof. Crowder, Glenn Greenwald, Jimmy Dore, success across the board for populist personalities who actually believe in the working class. I think that's great news. Mm -hmm. I think the night is always darkest before the dawn. Things Mm -hmm. may get pretty bad. I do think we're on the verge of some major conflict that's going to happen. National divorce could precipitate some serious fighting over resources. But ultimately, I think it's going to be, it's going to get a lot better. You know, if you believe in the Strasshow generational theory, then we are in the fourth turning, the period of tumult Mm -hmm. and crisis. And that means after 2028, things are going to get really, really good. And we're going to have 40 years of growth and prosperity, 20 years of stagnation, and then 20 years of, cl- of crisis and collapse again. So You know what's marked you know. for 2029? What? Peak graphene. Uh-huh. <laughs> what, mar- what is that? Graphene's p- this okay, carbon. Here we go again. Uh, Take a drink, everybody. <laughs> it's a material, like, um, and it's going to be, it's carbon. Uh-huh. But they figured out how to make it as a, monoatomic layer just one layer atom thick layer of carbon it's got amazing properties i got using it for building materials in the 21st century pure carbon you can get out of carbon dioxide we can withdraw the carbon dioxide make buildings out of it basically i got this guy a christmas present (laughs) tim got me graphene (laughs) for christmas um but Uh the market has i did was doing a lot of research 2018 looking down in in chile to build a company down there to start producing it and everything was pointing to 2029 as peak the year that Global society is going to embrace graphene. We, yeah. we we have a button. You can't see it. And whenever we feel the conversation's going in circles, I press it and a big thing lights up saying graphene and it flashes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it cues Ian to just... I also have a shock. It shocks me. <laughs> it on, does, yeah. From under my seat in case my eyes are closed. There's a DMT one for the after show, yeah. but that's a different <laughs> story. But but to kind of ask you, what what gives you hope? And to kind of also, while you're, you're here, I, I think it's fair to say that we kind of see the solution as very differently. Uh, but we agree on the problem. We agree that obviously the billionaires are controlling too much of our existence. We believe that the banks have absolutely printed money out of thin air. We believe that we're controlled by multinational corporations that call the shots. Populism has never been heard by the, uh, the government. Is there hope for us working together somehow from these different perspectives on these larger populist ideas? Do you see populists from the left and right potentially ever coming together? I get hope from going around the country, talking to people everywhere who are working class, who are completely don't care what their who their neighbors voted for, who are totally post partisan. Partisanship is a completely elite phenomenon because elites make money off of it. And so I get a lot of hope talking to working class Americans because um, they have hope. And I think that the, but, but I guess, yeah, I still feel stupidly like, I don't know, I don't know how we, how we do it without, um, I still, I'm struggling to have the vision that you have, like to see past the current moment. So I feel a little bit like I'm still struggling to point out like to the media itself, like, hey, you guys are corrupt. Could you be a little (laughs) less corrupt? Uh, uh, Working class people are human. Can you treat them better? You know, like I feel a little bit like I'm, but I feel super hopeful about America. I love this country and I I think that it's, it's people are getting better and better every day. Like I think that we've seen, a huge, huge revolution on the right in terms of how it thinks and talks about race and how it thinks and talks about things like police brutality very recently, criminal justice, stuff like that. So I get tons of hope from the unity I see everywhere except in the elites. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to watch live, you can check out this channel Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you want more unfiltered and uncensored content with all of these guests, go to timcast.com and become a member. 
all of these guests you know and love in exclusive segments on our website where we are unrestricted in what we talk about. So you'll definitely not want to miss it. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all next time.